We are going to look at patents and documentations. I am going to be showing you the truth that anybody can see for themselves. All they need to do is do a search result on their computer. Anyone can see that geoengineering, chemtrails, stratospheric aerosol injection are all absolute fact. Nobody is hiding this. There is no purpose to deny what is going on in front of us. These articles and these patents and this information will all be posted in the links below. There is no excuse to make believe that this is not happening. This documentation is from the USPTO patent full text and image database. First, before we get involved in all the information of the patents, let us take a look at what USPTO stands for. The USPTO is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. All legitimate patents go through here. Let's take a look. This is for stratospheric Welsbach seeding for reduction of global warming. This is only one patent by the Hughes Aircraft Company. The method of claim wherein said material comprises one or more of the oxides and of metals. Three, the metal of claim one wherein said metal comprises aluminum oxide. Four, the method of claim one wherein said material comprises thorium oxide. Five, the method of claim one wherein said particles are dispersed by seeding the stratosphere with a quantity of said particles at altitudes in the range of 7 to 13 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The method of claim 1 wherein the size of said particles is in the range of 10 to 100 microns. The method of claim wherein said material comprises a refractory material. The method of claim wherein said material is a Wells batch material. What is this telling us? We are being sprayed with chemicals such as oxides of metals, aluminum oxide, thorium oxide, and many other materials. Refractory materials, Welsh batch material, all kinds of materials. People say that cloud seeding is not chemtrails or geoengineering, when in fact cloud seeding is definitely chemtrails and geoengineering. I have so much evidence to go through with you today that you will not believe your eyes. So now that we are talking about the chemicals, I'm going to go over only one chemical that they use for a fact in cloud seeding, and that would be silver iodide. Now, I have mentioned before in my chemtrail videos that they started this in the 50s. They have been doing it for over 50 years. And you will see this prevalent through the articles that I read you. This article is from Water Resources Research from February 1970. Ecological Effects of Silver Iodide and Other Weather Modification Agents. A review from University of Michigan School of Natural Resources. So these are from universities. Universities have studied this. It is so public. The silver ion is among the most toxic of heavy metal ions, particularly to microorganisms and to fish. What do we eat? We eat fish. There is some possibility from cloud seeding will retard growth of algae, fungi, bacteria, and fish in fresh water. Additional laboratory investigations are needed. So in the 70s, they understood that silver iodide causes retardation. We breathe it as a contaminant. So why do we begin recently developmental issues when it comes to autism, Alzheimer's, and other issues that we have today? Because it retards the developmental growth. Inhibition of aquatic microorganisms would interfere with the cycle that returns essential nutrients to the water and air. And water should be regularly monitored. Do you really believe that they're going to monitor silver iodide Look up to the sky. What clouds are they seeding? Have you ever asked yourself that? They drop these chemicals, silver iodide, aluminum oxides, and other contaminants into the sky when the sky is blue. 
there are no clouds. How can you cloud seed a cloud that doesn't exist? Most currently proposed methods for intentional modification of weather depend on artificial nucleating agents to alter microphysical processes within clouds. Within clouds, they're not putting it in clouds. Silver iodide is the most widely used nucleating agent, although certain organic compounds hold promise for the future, I bet they do. Experience with hard pesticides and recent indications of environmental contamination by mercury point up the need to consider physical and biological concentration mechanisms, degradability and effects on non-human parts of ecological systems before deliberately introducing a new material into the environment. So what kind of materials are they introducing to the environment? They are introducing hard pesticides and contamination by mercury, deliberately introducing a new material into the environment. So far, only human health aspects of silver iodide have been evaluated in the literature. There have been no examinations of potential ecological effects of cloud seeding agents. They didn't do a study in the 70s with the ecological damages that it has been doing. It is common sense that if you have damaged the ecosystem with your contaminants, that it will then contaminate humans as well. So now we are going to look at some patents. If you notice, every time that they cloud seed or manipulate the weather, it is always on blue skies. You can see this everywhere. To deny this would be insane. They always do blue skies. Hardly ever do they do clouds. With industrial materials and particles and silver iodide and aluminum oxides and wells back material, this is some really highly toxic, dangerous stuff we are dealing with. And we need to address this issue, not to deny it and attack anybody who presents information. What is your agenda by hiding this information? These are public documentations by the USPTO.gov is from the government is providing this information it is public so here is the USPTO United States Patent and Trademark Office if you look to the right these are the patents if you look to the left these are the dates that they happened and what they're doing 1920 is when it started to happen the process and apparatus for the production of intense artificial clouds, fog, or mist. And they go on. I'm going to go slowly. I'm not going to read this for you because you can take a look for yourself. Now many people who deny chemtrails, geoengineering, stratospheric aerosol injection and weather modification with silver iodide, aluminum oxides, all kinds of materials and industrial particles, I'm going to show you something very disturbing. A lot of people will tell you, how do you know that this is on a global scale? How do you know that they are doing this in a massive environment? What makes you think that there is anything really going on. Well, how about the Weather Modification Incorporated? You can see who they serve. Parts in Africa, Australia, South America, and North America. When most people look up, they see clouds. We see potential. People don't look up these days. That's the problem. Now, more than ever, the worldwide need for solutions to atmospheric necessities such as water resource management and environmental quality monitoring is critical. With nearly a half century 
of successful programs. Our experience speaks for itself. They have been doing it for over 50 years. I keep telling people that they have been doing it for over 50 years. Weather modification. I will be posting so many links below that if you ignore this, everyone who is watching this video will know that you are a troll and a shill. Intelligence, information that the government themselves provides you. And it is so rampant that they have sponsored corporations. Let's look at their program services. Program services, the sky's the limit. Weather Modification Incorporated has a wide range of services to provide knowledge, data, equipment, and capability at any phase in your project. We can also tailor a program to meet your specific objectives and manage it from beginning to end. Our talented scientists, researchers, project managers, technicians, and pilots have the expertise you need to carry out an efficient, effective weather program. You can pay them to do this. Now, why are they cloud seeding and spraying you with chemicals? Because they can. Because it is all about money. You pay them, they do it. The destruction of all mankind is because of money. The root of all evil. Feasible studies, systems integration, technology transfer, program management, program design. And they go through all of this stuff. Weather Modification Incorporated has been involved in multiple programs with the goal to identifying the potential benefits derived from the application of cloud seeding techniques. Our feasibility studies focus on the cloud structures and patterns in the project area. Gathered information assists in identifying the cloud seeding technology that's best suited for the project. We work with many clients, whether it is on a long-term basis or a short-term contract. Client requests are almost never the same, and we take pride in customizing our services to meet your specific needs. Now let's look at environmental monitoring. Unmatched expertise, exceptional equipment, I bet they have exceptional equipment. Whether you need to document the character of clouds or variations in visibility, we have the knowledge you require, the instrumentation you need, and the means to deploy it. Transportation and dispersion of aerosols. To document the movement and dispersion of aerosols in the atmosphere, we offer tracer technologies that enable you to release and track a variety of materials to considerable distance downwind. These are not contrails, these are chemtrails slash atmospheric aerosol injection slash weather modification slash cloud seeding. If the terrain is complex, we can provide numerical models to gain understanding of locally specific transport and dispersion. Cloud seeding, introduction of seeding agents. Water resources are increasingly taxed by exploding demand and continue population growth. The world's population is projected to grow over 40% in the next 45 years. Weather modification, commonly known as cloud seeding, is the application of scientific technology that can enhance a cloud's ability to produce precipitation. They're not dumping it on clouds, are they? Weather Modification Incorporated is on the forefront of scientific technology to maximize water availability worldwide. This is happening on a worldwide scale. Application of scientific concepts and extensive scientific experimentation has proven that cloud seeding increases the amount of precipitation. Yes, cloud seeding is a fact. They also don't tell you that it has silver iodide, aluminum oxides, and all kinds of industrial particles to contaminate the clouds. So when you drink the water, when the rainfall comes in, it destroys all the algae and the bacterial organisms and eventually affects us. Enlist our team of cloud seeding experts. Whether you are looking for a small operation or a full program, Water Modification Incorporated can ensure your cloud seeding project runs smoothly. From Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, approved aircraft installations, configured for aerial cloud seeding and cloud physics, to ground-based seeding equipment and training. They have training for and ground-based equipment. Weather Modification Incorporated has the equipment, experience, and knowledge you need. Aerial cloud seeding, ground-based cloud seeding. I'm not going to get too in-depth with this 
because there's too much information involved. So a lot of people wonder why there is so many trails in the sky. And they always say they're all contrails, not chemtrails. In reality, they would all be chemtrails. They would be a lot more chemtrails than there would ever be contrails. The reason for this is because they are in competition with each other. North American Weather Consultants Incorporated the world's longest standing private cloud seeding weather modification company you can call them and visit their website and email them if you wanted to they have competitions with each other it is all about money and there's deliberately all these trails in the sky doing all this it's because it is a massive corporation cloud seeding frequently asked questions Cloud seeding, also known as weather modification, is the deliberate treatment of certain clouds or cloud systems with the intent of affecting the precipitation processes within those clouds. Application of this technology is increasing worldwide. This is a worldwide program. They're all programs and they're independent of each other because they are making money. They are profiting from you getting sick. This page addresses some key questions relating to cloud seeding and its practical uses. References are provided at the end of this document keyed to numbers at the end of the highlighted topics. A brief summary of the scientific basis for cloud seeding is available here. Click on the button. When did applications of modern cloud seeding technology begin? Attempts to modify the weather have been conducted for centuries. However, modern cloud seeding dates from the late 1940s, springing from a discovery at the General Electric Labs. The ability of dry ice shavings to convert supercooled water droplets, those existing as water at temperatures colder than freezing, to ice particles was observed during the nucleating properties of various materials in certain cold cloud conditions. Trails in the atmosphere soon followed and operational cloud seeding programs began in about 1950. So when did you look into the sky and see it blue one day and then now there are so many trails in the sky. So basically even the contrails have a little bit to do with chemtrails. What are the most common applications of cloud seeding. The most common intended effects of cloud seeding include precipitation increase, rain and or snow, fog dispersal, and hail suppression. Of these, the majority of operational projects focus on precipitation increase. So who conducts cloud seeding activities? Very important to understand. The large majority of cloud seeding projects are conducted by a handful of highly specialized commercial firms working under contract to a variety of sponsors, some water agencies and hydroelectric power generation companies conduct their own programs. Researchers continue to conduct occasional trials within carefully designed and controlled experimental projects, striving to better understand the various and cloud effects and cloud seeding and to refine quantitative estimates of cloud seeding effectiveness. So they are continuing research. Who are the most common sponsors of cloud seeding projects? The most common sponsors of cloud seeding projects include water agencies, municipalities, operators of hydroelectric power facilities, agricultural or ranching interests, airports and recreational interests such as sky areas. An increasing number of sponsors are incorporating cloud seeding as an integral part of their ongoing water resource management strategies. It is all about money. Even airports have this. So what planes are out there spraying chemtrails? Everything is doing cloud seeding, suggesting that they put these chemicals inside the clouds when in fact they're doing it in blue skies. So if they do it for weather modification, then they're trying to block out the sun so you don't feel the heat so much. Why is cloud seeding so attractive to increasing number of sponsors? It says because it does not require construction of large permanent and costly structures, some as dams or water conveyance systems. Projects can be mobilized quickly and operations can be regulated as water needs dictate or suspended very quickly if hazardous weather conditions develop. 
So basically, it's all about cost. The less you spend on building permanent and costly structures, the more money you'll have in your pocket. It is about money. How widely used, accepted is cloud seeding technology? Over its history of 50 years, modern cloud seeding has involved projects of various types in nearly 50 countries around the world. You're debunked already if you don't believe this is on a massive scale. Some individual projects have been in operation nearly continuously for decades, with a few operating for nearly 50 years. As water needs increase worldwide, the demand for weather modification services will also increase. So you're not going to see an end to this. It will get so bad one day that you can't stop it. All the chemtrails, all the supposed contrails, are not what you see. This is a global attack on us because they want their money. We are breathing this shit in so they can get paid. They don't care about you. They are going to increase their demands and put more hazardous material in the sky for you to breathe so they can gain their money. How is cloud seeding accomplished? Cloud seeding materials are released via ground-based and or airborne systems. Determination of the best suited method or combination of methods for a given project is based upon an assessment of a variety of factors. What are the most commonly used seeding materials? The materials used in cloud seeding include two primary categories tied to the type of precipitation process involved. One category includes those which act as glaciogenic ice forming agents such as silver iodide. Now we just went over silver iodide and the effects that it has on the ecosystem. And if it has an effect on the ecosystem, it has an effect on us. That is only one chemical. They're not mentioning the others. Dry ice and compressed liquid propane or carbon dioxide, which are appropriate in cloud systems where the precipitation process is primarily cold, colder than freezing. Now this is interesting because they put in silver iodide, liquid propane, and carbon dioxide. But what about global warming? Isn't carbon dioxide a bad thing to be putting into the atmosphere? How about liquid propane? How about aluminum oxides? How about a mix of those? How is this helping global warming? This is all about money. It has nothing to do with helping global warming. In fact, this would be destroying the atmosphere, not helping the atmosphere. Of the ice forming materials, the most commonly used is silver iodide. The second major category is focused on cloud systems where the warm coalescence process predominates. In those environments, hygroscopic water attracting materials such as salt, urea, and ammonium nitrate can be utilized. How many chemicals did they just name? Of the hygroscopic materials, the most commonly used are salts. Then it goes on. How does cloud seeding work? How does warm cloud seeding work? Do the commonly used seeding materials pose any direct health or environmental risks? Yes, they do. They'll tell you no because they have to keep their jobs. Are cloud seeding activities subject to regulation and control? In many jurisdictions, government agencies are responsible for regulation of cloud seeding in the public interest. These agencies commonly require licenses and or permits for cloud seeding to help assure that the projects are properly designed and that those conducting such operations are properly qualified. In the U.S., for example, nearly two-thirds of the 50 states have developed rules and regulations specific to cloud seeding activities. These regulatory groups generally also maintain records of cloud seeding activities, meaning these are public. If you have enough money, you can hire them. What does cloud seeding cost? The cost of cloud seeding varies greatly depending on a large number of factors, such as which seeding method of materials are appropriate to a specific application, the frequency of seedable conditions, the size of the intended area of effect, and the duration of the project. Most cloud seeding projects carry favorable benefit cost ratios ranging over 20 to 1 in some cases. Cost questions are best addressed via direct discussion with a well-qualified cloud seeding company consultant. What does the future hold for the cloud seeding field and its sponsors? As water needs steadily increase worldwide, 
the demand for weather modification services will also increase. They're not going to stop this whatsoever. You better enjoy your blue skies while you can. They make money. They profit off of this. The only way you can stop them is if the government stops them themselves. Focused research efforts will continue to yield incremental refinements to the technology. Sponsors will increasingly enjoy the benefits of cloud seeding at very attractive benefit cost ratios. And a growing number of those sponsors will incorporate cloud seeding as an integral part of their ongoing water resource management strategies. Here are the references. How can I obtain more specific information? The Weather Modification Association, WMA, has produced a basic information booklet, Weather Modification, some facts about seeding clouds. They got their phone number. They even got a weather modification information booklet. How in the world does anyone reject the information when it's so widely available? For those wishing to investigate the possibility of developing and implementing a specific project, we recommend that you contact us, North American Weather Consultants, an industry pioneer and leader since 1950, to discuss your cloud seeding needs and interests. As the longest standing, continuously operating cloud seeding company in the U.S. and probably the world, we have amassed a track record of many hundreds of successful research and operational project seasons in a wide variety of climatic regions worldwide. We would be happy to discuss your specific needs and interest and help with all aspects of cloud seeding issues, from basic questions to feasibility studies to full service cloud seeding projects. Our projects are never of the cookie cutter variety. We will work closely with you to design and implement a project which is tailored specifically to your circumstances. Contact information is provided below. This is their information. You can contact them. There is no denying that this is happening. The reason why they are forcing global warming is because it is a trillion dollar project. They make money off of it. All the donations, all the foundations, all the people are getting paid for this. They are cloud seeding because they get a lot of money. They are spraying you with chemicals. It's a worldwide program and they are making money off of killing you.